Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and these are my currently inked pens for October 2023. As you can see, there are quite a few Pelican fountain pens in my collection for this month. I was inspired to use these pens this month because I had them all inked up for the Pelican hubs. And I also have quite a few new fountain pens that I wanted to put in use this month as well. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is my newest Tweezby Eco Indigo and Bronze. It has a fine nib and it's inked up with one of the ink vent colors for the month, Diamine Serendipity. The next fountain pen is the Edison Premier. This is a Goulet exclusive fountain pen in the Dragoness finish. I purchased this one with a medium nib. The unboxing video for this fountain pen is coming soon. And this one is inked up with Pilot Orochizuku Fuyu Shogun. Another new fountain pen in my collection is the Pilot Custom 823. I'm so excited to have this one. I purchased this one from a new friend, Kay. Thank you so much for this fountain pen. So this is the amber model. So you should be able to see that amber right there, but it's pretty difficult to see amber here because of the ink that I'm using in it. This has a broad nib. Sometime down the line, I'm probably gonna have a custom grind on here. It'd be great to have that beak point grind by Matthew Chen on here. This is inked up with a beautiful blue ink, Robert Oster Blue Martini. This was one of the Ink Flight ink samples that I wanted to use from last month. This is my Schaefer Balance Admiral. This is a feather touch nib in a fine. This is a vacuum fill pen and it just feels so very nice. I love how it feels. I don't really want to post it <laughs> or I have posted it in the past and kind of marked it up a bit here. So lately I've been pretty careful with this one, but yeah. I purchased this fountain pen from Paper Wants a Pen at last year's San Francisco Pen Show. This is a vacuum fill pen and I have this pen inked up with Pilot of Roshizuku in a home. So I figured, you know, a nice, lovely fountain pen that's no longer available. Why, why not match it up with the fountain pen ink that's no longer available? So we'll see how these two perform together. I'm excited about that one. This is another new fountain pen. It's the Yoseka Home fountain pen. This is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim model. And it has that champagne gold trim that was not the initial design, but I actually really love this. I didn't order it. I didn't do the pre-order. Yoseka Stationery had some of these Pro Gear Slim models with the champagne gold available for sale. So I snapped up one of these. It has a medium nib and I have this one inked up with Robert Oster Detox. This was one of the Ink Flight samples that I wanted to try from last month. I'm very excited about this pairing. I'm excited about a lot of pairings. The next fountain pen is the first Pelican of this lineup. This is the Pelican 140. It's one of my vintage fountain pens. It's supposed to be a fine nib. You'll see when I start writing with it, but it feels much more broad than a fine nib. And I have this one inked up with the second Diamine Ink Vent color for the month. This is inked up with Diamine Apple Teeny. It is such a bright green color. I feel like I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone with this one, but maybe it will surprise me in a good way. I figured that something so bright would be really happy in a wet and juicy fountain pen nib that is also quite flexible. This is the Pelican M205 in the Moonstone finish. It has a medium nib and I have this Moonstone fountain pen inked up with Robert Oster Blood Moon, another ink flight color from last month. Next is the Pelican M400 in the white tortoise shell. This has an extra fine nib. For some reason, I can't find the coloring ink swatch, but this is the wear and gold swatch of Sailor 50 States, Georgia. So next is my Pelican M605. This fountain pen has a fine nib. It is inked up with Teranishi Guitar Opera Rose. I'm giving this ink a second chance in a super wet, slightly wider nib. So hopefully I'll enjoy it this month. <laughs> we'll see. And finally, this is my largest Pelican fountain pen. This is the Pelican M800 in brown black. It has a broad cursive italic nib. It was ground by Mr. Mike Masayama. I have this fountain pen inked up with 
Robert Oster Bronze. A recommendation from one of my viewers. Okay, so I have two more fountain pens that are completely empty right now. They are awaiting ink selections from the October Ink Flight box. So once I make a decision on which two to use this month, I will fill up these two pens with those selected inks. And I figured that since this one is so neutral and this one is so colorful, that whatever inks I choose will be just fine. That's all for these pen and ink pairings. I will be testing out these pairings on various papers. So I've got Midori, Tamoy River, Beautiful, and Rhodia. It looks really dark on this cream Midori paper. It's interesting that this Pilot Broad nib is about the same as this Yovo Medium nib. Ooh, I love the feedback on this thing, the Sailor feedback. I love how it sounds and feels. Oh, we oui. yes. I like that. Thank you for the recommendation. I like that. <laughs> so these are the inks on Midori paper. I'll be right back after I do some additional writing samples on Tomoe River, Beautiful, and Rhodia papers. But yes, I really love these muted colors. Appletini is just standing out so, so much amongst all of these. But I really do like that pop of color as well. I'm excited for this month. I really like these ink colors. All right, I'll be back. Okay, this is on Idleful paper. I don't know if I'll be able to capture this in the microphone, but this fountain pen is a bit squeaky on Idleful paper. My Pelican 140 with Dimine Appletini is squeaking as I write. So in my upstrokes, it squeaks going upward. Thought I'd go ahead and insert that there. So far, I really love how these fountain pens perform on Tamoy River and Beautiful Paper. It is so much more smooth on Tamoy River than it was on Midori. There's much more texture and the inks feel a bit drier on Midori Paper. Like I can definitely tell the difference between the two of these papers. So yeah, I love the smoothness here and I love like the slight increase in drag on Beautiful Paper. All right, so let's review these writing samples. This is cream Midori paper, and it looks really nice. I love the warmth of this paper and how the colors, they look like they just match. I really love the muted colors. I'm even enjoying, so far, Dimine Appletini. So if I get a little tired of like these soft colors, which I very rarely do, I really do like having the option of using a brighter, more saturated color. Here is white Tamoy River paper. The pens and inks definitely glide more smoothly across the paper, Tamoy River paper, than they do on Midori paper. I really do like how Dimine Serendipity looks. So I believe it does have a bit of sheen as well, but I love that shimmer on Dimine Serendipity. And I was a little bit worried because this might be my first time trying a shimmer ink in a fine nib. I've seen it done in fine nibs and even extra fine nibs, but this is my first time trying something that's narrower than a medium nib. Polyrosh Suzuku Fuyu Shogun. I really like the shading in this pen and ink pairing. I like this blue martini. I'm, I seem to be pretty picky about my blue inks, same thing about my red inks, and sometimes even purple inks. But yeah, it takes a bit for me to find like a really good blue that I enjoy. So this is a really nice one. It's a muted color. Yeah, it's like a, a less saturated, but still deep blue without it being like blue black. Palo Rosa Zuku Inaho in the Schaefer Balance Admiral. This is definitely a fine nib. I really do enjoy it. And let me pull out the Hobonichi Weeks. I think I had the easiest time using the Schaefer Balance Admiral, this fine nib in the Hobonichi Weeks because the tip is actually so fine. And I like that. It wasn't unpleasant either because it's a pretty bouncy nib. And so I really do like that. Oh yeah. Let's see the differences between these two cream papers. On the left, you have the Hobonichi Weeks or the Tamoy River cream paper. And on the right is Midori cream paper. 50 States Georgia looks a little bit greener on the Weeks paper. Yeah, and it's looking a bit brown here on Midori paper. Teranishi Guitar Opera Rose looks more orange on Midori paper, actually. Robert Oster Bronze is more green here than on the Midori paper. So let's take a look at cream paper versus white Tamoy River paper. I do prefer the contrast of my inks against 
white paper, but I really do love how the cream paper warms up each one of these inks. All right, and on beautiful paper, I just have so much fun. I really enjoy using my inks on this paper just because it glides across the paper so, so nicely. It's such a smooth experience. The colors are pretty consistent. There's a more stark contrast, I guess you can say it that way, in the shading for Teranishi Guitar Opera Rose. I don't know if I can describe it. This reminds me of what it looks like when you partially erase things from the paper. So like these little lighter areas, it reminds me of like partially erased pencil lead. Interesting, that's very interesting. I wonder what it's gonna look like when I start writing like a full page of text with this pen and ink combo. I really enjoy this Robert Oster bronze. I love how it dries. Cause it's got that, is it brown? Is it green? I don't know, <laughs> but I love it either way. I really, I like that. And of course the nib is just so broad that I prefer writing in cursive with this broad cursive italic nib just to make it a little bit more legible. So here I was in danger of having pretty blobby handwriting with the broad cursive italic, but here it's just a little bit more clear. And here are the inks on Rhodia paper. Nice and reliable. I think there's less of that red sheen in Diamond Serendipity on Rhodia paper. So I come back over here. Yeah, so if I go here, there's less red here than there is in the sheen and shimmer. This is like the shimmer is much more of a yellow here on Rhodia paper because that red is missing. And here it's more of a rose gold almost because of that underlying sheen. That's pretty cool. I like how that looks. I like that. All right, so these are all of my writing samples for my fountain pens for the month of October. And just a reminder, I will be filling up these two pens for the month as well with, to be determined, inks from the upcoming Ink Flight video. I have like a very muted, very deep, dark, understated aesthetic here today. So I've got some of the blues, but lots of black and quite a bit of gold and yellow hardware. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm trying out broader nibs, you know, these broader nibs. Let's see how I like writing with all five of these Pelican fountain pens. I wonder if I have a preference. So far, I really prefer the size of these two Pelican fountain pens, the M605 and the M800. This month, I really wanna determine my updated perspective on these three fountain pens, since they're pretty small and basically the size of the Pro Gear Slim. Like, what is my perspective on these smaller fountain pens? Do I still really enjoy these? Because last year, I was really crazy about small fountain pens, pocket-sized pens. This year, I've been really exploring and enjoying these larger pens. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.